اعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين انه خير ناصر ومعين ثم الصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين حبيب اله العالمين على القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى اهل بيته الذين اذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تنزل النقم واسقين بتاق امتي الله سبحانه وتعالى for granting us with another wonderful opportunity to continue to dissect and examine this important dua dua in kumai Last week we ended up our discussion by outlining those sons that here apart seek God. Tonight inshallah we're going to look at the second phase of the dua where you are asking Allah to forgive you certain groups of sins. The groups are the one which Mawlai Kaina taught to Kumayr ibn Ziyad. Allahumma ikfir li al-dhunub allati tunzil al-nikam. Oh Allah forgive me those sons that bring calamity. In other words, there are certain types of sons, when you commit them, it will invite calamities, discomfort, problems, and difficulties to your life. Likewise, we discussed the first one. Sins that tear apart safeguard, you become vulnerable easily. The same thing, the second one is, if you don't want to invite calamity, and you don't want to be associated with difficulties and problems, then let's try as much as we can to stay away from these sins that we are about to discuss and outline. Because you realize that when Amin al-Mu'mineen salawatullahi wa salamu wa alayhi taught Kumayn ibn Ziyad, Imam Amin al-Mu'mineen explained to us, for you to get the bounties of Allah and the mercy of Allah, you need to get rid of the sins that are with you. Or you need to get the forgiveness of Almighty Allah. Therefore, Imam Amir al in one of his teachings, he said, instead of you adding more good deeds in your life, spend time asking for forgiveness of Allah. Imam said, for you to spend time asking for forgiveness of Allah for the shortcomings that you have committed, is much better and dearer to Allah than adding more good deeds in your life. Say, for instance, you know you are a sinner and you have accumulated a lot of sins. Instead of you to spend time asking for forgiveness of Allah, sending salawat on our bayt, you want to go and do other things like you wake up the whole night, you are not asking for forgiveness of Allah, you want to do ta'atu. Ta'atu is okay, but once your sins are forgiven, the moment you perform one rada, Allah wa ta'ala will accept it. Therefore, let us look at the dua. Allahumma ikfir liya dhunuba allati tunzilu al-niqam. Now the word here is niqam. Niqam is a plural of the word nikma. Nikma means punishment. Means adab, discomfort, difficulties, calamities. So now we are asking Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, to forgive us those sons that will bring difficulties into our lives. But now for you to be able to stay away from those sons, you need to know those sons. If you don't know those sons, how are you going to stay away from them? And therefore we have a riwaya from Imam Jafar al-Salik sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa Imam said there are nine sons that invite calamities. But inshallah tonight we will do only four or five of them, if time permits me. Nine sons invite difficulties, invite calamities. It makes you live in a very tight situation. You find yourself you are not happy and you don't know what is the reason. You have all the money, you are married, you have children, but still sometimes you find you are not happy. You try to find out what is making me not happy, you don't know. Ulama said sometimes you need to pause a little bit and look at yourself. Maybe you have committed sins that make you unhappy. So therefore, number one sin that brings calamity, according to our Sifi Imam, is al betrayal. To betray. You know what is betrayal? 
Atanarudu ala al-haq. Is to close your eye and do the wrong against someone and you know it's wrong. It's for someone to confide with you and you agree with the person. I will not go and cause any calamity. All of a sudden, it's causing fitness, spreading your name. I'll ban you. Imam said the first son that brings the difficulties to the meaning, to their communities, to their societies, to their personalities, to their families, is that when they pray, they betray one another. They said, number one, the Lord the Allah, you know it's right, but you stay away from the right. Yani, willingly, you go against the right. Willingly, you betray your brother, you betray your sister. He entrusted with money, whatever you betray. And also they said, well, intahak al-hudud al-ilahiyya. One other verification of betrayal is that you exceed the limit of Allah. Allah approaching you some limitation. And Allah says, you stay here, don't go beyond this and don't go below it. But once you go against that boundary which is given to you by Allah, it is regarded as betraying Allah and betraying oneself. Therefore, it will trigger unhappiness in your life, discomfort in your life. That is why you have numerous ayat of Quran talking about al value and this betrayal. One verse Allah says, the top or the leader of betrayal is Karun. Allah said, Inna Karun kana bin kawmi Musa fabada. Karun was among the people of Musa, and in that chain in line. And then he betrayed. When he betrayed, you saw the ending of Karun. He ended up Kafir, he ended up in a very miserable situation. His names are among the people who enter the fire of Allah on the day of Qiyamah. The same thing when Allah talks about the family of Imran and the mother of Musa. Allah talked about it. Ya Uhta Arun. Ma kana abu kibara asawin. Wa ma kana tu ummu kibagiya. That's the word bagi. Allah said, Oh, the sister of Harun. Your father wasn't a bad man at all. And your mother never betrayed. So therefore, the first son that will cause problems, discomfort, is to betray. You see, the moment you are betrayed, you feel comfortable, you feel happy. But I give you a few minutes, or a few hours, or a few days and months. The one who betrayed, you will find yourself himself wanting. The place will become so small to him. When you see the people he betrays, he cannot look at their faces. So therefore, when you make the dua, Oh Allah, forgive me, son. That will bring the difficulties. Number one is betrayal. Therefore, our Sif Imam said, Mu'min, never allow a certain attitude to take over yourself. One attitude Imam said, envy, al-hasad. You find Muslim, they envy one another, not in good way, but in bad way. Because Allah elevated this one, this one is making dua, Allah must bring him down. Because Allah has taken one person to a certain position, his heart is not happy. Imam Ali Salaam said, Muhammad, don't allow 13 things. One of them is Hassan, and the other one is al kazib lying. Today, blatantly, you find believers are lying. Believer can sit and manufacture information and blow those informations out. The case of Allah be on lies. And then the next one, Imam said, al you betrayal. You as a believer, you cannot allow yourself to betray someone. It is totally haram. That's number one. Number two sin, that bring calamity al udwan ala hukukillah is to sit on top of people's rights. My shalini is with you. Have you given me? You sit on top of it. And when I talk, you raise your voice. We make a deal, you betray me. I don't know. When they put the measurements, they temper with the measurements. So they don't measure it for you properly. When they temper with
want it, you will say it's complete, but when you take it home, you realize that what you've been given is not right. So the second thing is al udwan ala hukuk al -akhari. And here you realize that when Allah created us, especially in our communities, Allah makes sure there are rights between us. Now one right is the right between a husband and wife. If you do not give that right, it is with one, you are sitting on top of that right. Right is not only about money. Number two, there is a right between father and mother, mother and children. If you do not give that right, it is tantamount to committing sin, that very calamities and difficulties in your life. Number three, of course, it goes higher. There is a right for the, for the nation uh, yani on the shoulder of the leaders and vice versa. You don't give the right, Allah will always bring discomfort to you. Therefore, the second sin which we have to stay away from it is try as much as you can not to sleep with people's rights when you know they are not happy. Especially business people. Sometimes you make money because you want to make money when people's rights are violated. Don't do that. That's why Rasulullah said, do not die until and unless you make sure people's rights are given back to them before you go. Because if there is one thing that can make Barzan difficult for us, is eating people's rights. Once you eat somebody's right, it's something very, very severe in the eye of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, our Sifi Imam said the second sin that brings calamity is to sit on people's right. That's number two. Number three, as suhuriya bi ibadatillah is to mock at servant of God. How do you mock at each other? How do you tease one another? Sometimes we may tease a person because of the clothes he's wearing. All of a sudden he appears and everybody starts jiggling and laughing. And he doesn't know, and he's not like playing with you. You just love him because of the type of clothes he's wearing. That's a sohoria. La yes khan kawmu min kawmu de bawdirat. Asa an yakunu khayran minu. Wa la nisaun min nisaun. Asa an yakunna khayran minu. He said, do not. Group of people more at other group of people. Then Allah has specifically mentioned women because women they like that. Khushali, this one is which dress the other one is wearing. This woman is wearing mashallah, good clothes, this one is wearing abaa. They are making sohuriya. That is why Allah chapter the wala nisa umin nisa. When he said, do not group more at other group, he specifically bring women there because you know they are like that. And women should not mock at one another because of certain type of clothes they are wearing. You wear your clothes for a you are happy, alhamdulillah, you are able to afford. The one who is not able to, whatever she wear, alhamdulillah, the type of madness will be happy with it. You cannot mock at a person because of the style or the type of clothes the person is wearing. That's number one. Number two, you cannot mock at a person because of his financial status. Today you find some people when Allah elevated them out of his mercy and rahma, and others are still where they are, they walk at them. So Korea is not acceptable, it brings difficulties our baby. Sooner or later, if you don't get the difficulties, you will make sure Allah will make sure you get it before you depart from this world. And sometimes also look at even your wire. He said, don't walk at people because of their religious affiliation. Sometimes we mock at people because they are not Shia. We say, no, it's a kufar. Do not mock at people because of their religious affiliation. Prophet made it very clear. Think of yours, leave them. You give them dawa, you don't want to list it. You create awareness, they are yeah, the finish. You cannot judge them, leave them with Allah. It's a big statement, huh? So therefore you cannot mock people because of their religious affiliation. Therefore you come to chapter Baqarah. Allah said, وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَىٰ شَيَاطِينِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْتَحْتُونَ That's Quran. Ajib. Quran said, when they are with believers, they, mashallah, they are with their friends, they behave to, become, to be believers. When others are coming, they mock at them. But when they go with their friends, and the friends asked them, why were you mockering with us? He said, no, I'm mockering not you. I'm mockering those believers that I'm standing with them. And it double standard. You know, there are people, they are double standard. You will not be able to predict them. 
You will not be able to detect them. You don't know how they are. They act like chameleons. This is what the Quran is talking about. When you do that, you bring calamities. Well, you bring disaster to you. You bring fitna to yourself. And therefore, Quran made it very clear that as a believer, as a Muslim, do not make sukhoriya with others. If you do that, it will bring calamity. That is number three. Number four. Nakdul ahad. What is Nakdul ahad? Is to violate the agreement. Violation of an agreement is a sin. I agree with you. We signed or we spoke about it. Agree, agree, happy, happy. Then you go in your own way and violate it. Yani you disappoint. Nakdul Ahad is also one of the platforms that will bring calamities to ourselves. Difficulties in our lives. Problems into our lives. Because uh, you were told in Islam, al mu'minuna in the shuruti. Mu'mineen and believers, when they agree, Allah approves it. So once Allah approves, I agree with you, okay? We're going to make a deal. It's a business. Your share, my share. Happy, happy. I'm happy, I'm happy. Right, right. Sign, sign, finish. You end up violating it. It's a sin. It will bring calamity. It will bring problems. It will bring fitna to your life. Therefore, you find there are many verses of Quran where Allah cautions us and warns us not to disappoint when we agree with others. One of them, Allah said, Wa awfu bil ahd is a ahadtu. Fulfill the agreement when you agree. Yani, the moment you agree, you have to fulfill it. Therefore, Quran chapter 1 is Alladina yamkuduna ma ahad Allah bi an yusad wa yusiduna fil ahd ulaika umul khasiru. Allah said, those people who violate their agreement when they agreed and they spread the facade and corruption <laughs> from the face of the universe, they are the losers, not the people they disturb. Sometimes you violate agreement, you think that the person is a loser. He's not a loser. Allah said, You are the kasirun, you are the losers and transgressors in the eye of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if I also another verse of Quran, Allah said, fulfill the promise. Because promises of the day of Qiyamah, Allah will question about it. Any promise you make, so long as you make that promise, on the day of Qiyamah, Allah will question you about that promise. And then you will find also another verse, Ya ayyallahina amunu awfu bil bukud. Oh, those who believe, fulfill your agreements. If you agree, you have to fulfill it. Therefore, Rasulullah came forward and said, The signs of hypocrites are three. Even if you see them performing salah, you see them fasting in the month of Ramadan, you see them reciting the glorious Quran. So long as you see one of these three, you should know that they are hypocrites. Number one is a hadatha hadhaba. Whenever he talks, he laughs. They say, إِذَا عُرِفَ الْإِنسَانُ بِالْقَبِلِ لَدَ النَّاسِ تَقْدَابَ وَلَوْ كَانَ سَادِكَ It's a point. He said, if a person is known to be a liar, he will continue to be a liar in the eye of people, even if he's telling the truth, because the person is used to lying. So therefore, one sign of hypocrisy is that they lie. And you know, they start, Allah, Wallah. The moment they open their mouth, Allah is first. When down deep in their heart, they are lying. Number two, the sign of them. What is a wa'ala ahlafa? When they promise, they go against the promise. They promise you. They agree with you, they go against it. That is a point. And number three, what is a uqtubina khana? When he is untrusted, he betrayed. You entrust with your assets. You entrust with your property. You entrust with your business. Whatever you name them. Khana, he betrays. Prophet said, this is signs of the hypocrites. And the fourth one, and the fifth one, which will stop, inshallah, is that, al-a'lanu bil-ma'asi. 
you know, they proclaim and announce their sins outside. You know, Allah what if you commit something wrong. Don't come out and be bold about it. Allah wants you to be bold in informing Him, Allah. Not to come out and then you, 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 you informing people and you are laughing about it. You know, I finished that. You know, I did this. And Allah doesn't want you, if you commit something wrong, to come out and talk about it. Allah wants you, if you do it, you regret internally and ask for forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, in a nutshell, brothers and sisters, let's try as much as we can to stay away from these sins. Inshallah, we'll continue with the rest of them. Once you stay away from them, you are free from difficulties. You are free from discomfort. You are free from unhappiness. It's a happy, happy in the eye of Allah until you meet Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum ya Ibn Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum ya Ibn Amir al Assalamu alaikum ya Ibn Fatima al We are still in the morning session for our beloved mother, Zainab al Hora. Zainab is indeed Umm al Masa'ib after her mother, Fatima al Zahra. Zainab is the mother of Masa'ib, all those Masa'ib that befall in Ahl al Bayt. Zainab is also regarded as one of the ladies in Ahl al Bayt who indeed suffered pain in trying to enlighten the teachings of Ahl al Bayt. Let me take you briefly to one of the incidents which really is so helpful about the calamities and the musibah that before the Zainab. For those of you who have traveled to Sham, you have seen Bazaar Sham. May Allah bless us the visit of that place and may Allah the Allah relieve Syria of his suffering. Those of you who have been to Bazaar Isham, you know what I'm talking about. In Bazaar Isham was a place where they slapped the cheek of Zainab al It is a place where they hung to the hand of Abba Abdullah al They brought the ladies of Ali Muhammad, Zainab, Al Qulfur, Sukaina, and them. They brought them and they were showing them and they were slapping their cheek. That is why when Zazid brought them into the palace and they mounted the hands of the Matthias, including that of Abba Abdullah and Abu al-Qadr al-Abbas and the spears. And he asked the ladies of Abel Bay to sit on the ground and he removed their first veil. Now Yazid asked them to call his wife a hand. They brought him and when he became she was dressed properly in a hijab. The lady who went to call him, she said, oh Hind, some people came from Medina. And Hind loved the people of Medina because he used to work in the house of Amir al-Mu'minin al When he became inside, she asked the lady, where are you coming from, oh ladies? Hind was sitting next to Zainab and Umm Kulsum and Sukaina. Hind asked them, oh ladies, where are you coming from? Zainab said, oh lady, we are from Medina. When she said we are from Medina, Hind left her chair and sat next to Zainab and Umm Kulsum. Now look at the face of Zainab and Umm Kulsum. The face is dark because of the slabs. Now Allah, he asked them, where are you from Medina? They never said, we are from the hands of Ali, Yabna, Ali, Talib. 
So remember, it is to work in the house of Amin al Muhammadin. Hey Allah, then in the house of Amin al Muhammadin, I look for the house of Amin al Muhammadin, and she said, Yeah, so look at this woman, so much for that touch here. For in the house of Amin al Muhammadin, where is the house of Amin al